So the biggest lesson I learned from CES 2023 is that connected home technology is right on our doorstep. It's gonna have the biggest impact on our lives this year. And more than all the automation and the robots, those technologies are gonna be coming out maybe two, five, 10 years from now, the connected home technology is right at our doorsteps because it's enabling us to save time and resources. But how is it gonna work? Is there a standard for connected homes? How are we as the consumer gonna benefit from trying to get one or two or five, 10 Samsung products or LG products or Amazon Alexa products? How is it gonna help us live our lives better? And that's the question. So let's walk you through what I think smart home technology is going to be all about and what I learned just by looking and studying and understanding how I connect everything in my home. So what is smart home technology? It's the ability to learn about the occupants, you eventually anticipating your needs. That automated attentiveness will come with a price though because you need to be in the ecosystem, you need to get the gear, but the benefits should be worth it. Because in my house, I have so much stuff. All the stuff around me right here is pretty much interconnected and I can control it using my phone or some type of smart hub. But all these smart homes are a little bit different. My lights are controlled by the Govi. My Amazon devices are all controlled by Alexa. My television and different parts of my home are controlled by Google Assistant. And all these Assistant devices, they come and they're different. So will there be a standard? That's what we figured out and that's what I noticed at 2023 CES because Matter or the standard for smart home devices is finally getting implemented. The first implementers are companies like Samsung and LG who are coming in with their own standardized version of smart home tech. How is this gonna be different from Alexa or Google Assistant? Because Amazon and Google and even companies like Apple have been at the forefront of trying to implement their systems and their software into your house. Because virtual assistants have been around for, I would have to say, 10, five, a long time. But most of us only use it for simple tasks, like setting a timer or checking the weather. I don't think it's because we don't know how to use these products correctly. I think the technology just hasn't been there that it makes or saves us much time. And I, as a biggest proponent of smart home technology, I gotta say, when I try to convince my friends to try out a new air purifier that's smart, they're saying, why do I just leave it on? Or when I have uh, friends over and they're like, well, what's your television? I say, it's the Amazon Omni QLED. It's like an Echo Show. It's a bigger. They're like, what? Why would I use that? But then you see all of these other companies making the centerpiece for all their smart home hubs, the television, a screen on the refrigerator, your cell phone, all things you're going to have with you all the time or very accessible and soon to be your car. So for anyone hoping that there was one ecosystem to rule them all, there is going to be, hopefully. Knock on wood. Because the good news is companies, at least they're saying, they're going to try to adopt something called Matter. And Matter is an open source protocol used to standardize communication between devices in a smart home. It functions as a bridge between different devices, allowing them to communicate and interact with each other in a secure and efficient manner. Matter enables devices to send and receive data such as commands, notifications, and updates. And it's consistent and reliable since everybody's going to be on the same system. But this is in particular important for smart home environments because they need to be simplified. You can have thousands, hundreds, maybe tens of thousands of products that are available in the marketplace. How do you know it's going to work with your home? How do you know that in the future, it's not going to just get lost in the internet of everything or the everything of everything where this technology, it might be good today, but two years, it might not be secure anymore. It might not link up with your routers. It might be backward and not forward. But now with Matter, it's going to support future devices and technologies so users can add and replace their existing devices easier. Matter is powered by blockchain. And if you just think that's really fancy, well, it's just a way that all these systems can interconnect and be used interchangeably. Or in this case, interoperably is the word, interoperably. And that means if I go to the store and I get an Alexa, um, Echo Dot, it should be able to hypothetically work in the future with my Google Assistant at the most broadest sense. It's not gonna work today, but maybe the newest Echo Dot will work with Google Assistant in the future. So some key features that matter is gonna bring to the table. 
One, it, that means all your devices can be controlled by multiple different ecosystems. So you can control it not just with one system, but with multiple versions. Second, it should allow for more competition because there's a universal standard. That means it doesn't have to come from Apple. It doesn't have to come from Amazon to work on their system. So having this interoperably, it, it's gonna make it fully utilized so that a third party can come in and say, hey, I, I invented this amazing pasta machine. It should work on all these machines and all your systems interchangeably. Well, then they're gonna to wanna to be on Matter as well. And remember, this is all hypothetical because a lot of the brands have signed on to this, but we'll see if they actually stick to it. So currently Matter is focused on lighting products and HVAC products and your televisions and your microwave or things that can be easily used with Wi-Fi or something called Thread, which is their version of Bluetooth. But the next generation of Matter products is gonna be all across the board. It's not just gonna be on those products. It's gonna focus on things like security, uh, your security systems, your security home cameras. It's gonna affect things like your robo vacuums and your lawn mowers and anything else that is a bit too sophisticated to be inside controlled by an ecosystem across the board, but hopefully in the future it will be. So how will this all work? Well, Matter is run by the Connectivity Standard Alliance, otherwise known as CSA. And that CSA is going to be releasing updates every six months to manufacturers so they can continuously be on the forefront of the Matter code or the Matter blockchain. So finally, we've been waiting for products to utilize Matter since about 2021. It's two years later, now it is 2023 currently at the time of this video. And we're gonna finally see the first rollout from Samsung probably in about a few months. So it's taking a long time for Matter to come into the game, but once it's there, we're hoping that other early adopters make it the universal standard. So I don't have to go and say, oh, well, this is only gonna work for your this system. Well, this is only gonna work for that system, which makes life a lot more complicated for all of us. One example of that is going to be LG ThinQ, because ThinQ is a smart technology installed on certain LG home appliance models that are utilizing artificial intelligence to communicate with each other and provide a improved customer user experience. And that's because you can control your appliances using voice commands, Alexa, Assistant, Siri, um, do we need another one? But you can use it with voice commands and hypothetically it should improve your productivity. But the biggest improvement that ThinQ brings to you, or does LG call it Think? It might be called LG Think, because why would they call it ThinQ? What LG Think brings to you is that it's gonna allow you to refresh and update your devices. So when you buy a device today, let's say you're buying one today in January, 2023. Six months from now, you might find that there's new software out and you're gonna see, think that your product is obsolete. But LG is saying, well, no, we're gonna continually refresh the software similar to what you would experience on things like your iPhone and things like your automobile. Technology is continually getting software updates. Why doesn't your appliances do that? So they're putting in little chips and AIs into these devices to make them more accessible and easier to use and upgraded for your purpose. Samsung is also coming out with their own smart home hub. They even made a little device that's gonna be the smart home hub. I think they call it the smart home hub because it's a combination of a universal, okay. So Samsung is coming out with something they call a smart home hub. And it's just interconnecting all of their home devices on that universal home standard called Matter. And this is their first interconnected ecosystem that's utilizing Matter, but we'll have to see how it works and if they can improve it because it hasn't really been done before and we're not sure how it's gonna work yet. And bigger news is that it's not just Samsung and LG who are coming into that home game. It is now the Hisenses, the TCLs, the Bosch. Almost every major manufacturer of anything is now suddenly producing everything for your home. You have companies that just did cell phones suddenly making air purifiers. You have companies that just make televisions making air conditioners because they understand that all these systems are have to work in tandem together and that all these system information, people are gonna to wanna to see them on their biggest screens. And how is this gonna work with augmented reality or virtual reality? Because augmented reality can 
can make your smart home even better by giving users the ability to control and interact your space in intuitive and interactive ways. Just like, you know, if you ever use your phone with an AR filter, imagine now suddenly you have it with the glasses. Suddenly you have it with different materials. Suddenly you have it with the clothes you wear. It's all around us. Because AR, users can see a virtual representation of their home and appliances within them and control them. So this is not just going to be in a setting that you can't imagine. It's going to be in a setting that you can imagine right now. Amazon Alexa Auto. I can control my home utilizing auto inside of my car. And with the proliferation of the biggest screens we've ever seen, every single car is having screens and screens in the front, in the back, on the side, from end to end. Well, those are going to be providing even more ways that you can control things at home from your vehicle. Just like you can control it on your phones that were getting are getting bigger and bigger. Remember when this was the biggest phone you can get on an iPhone 8 Plus? Well, now the Pro Max has got a much bigger screen, even though it's about the same size. With all of this information, what is the point? My point is... The biggest thing coming in 2023 is not going to be a robot that can open your garage. It is not going to be a car that can drive itself around because that's still far away. It is going to be a home that everything is starting to get interconnected. So a lot of people are now going to suddenly realize, well, why do I not want to control that? Why can't I do this? Instead of, oh, that's cool. It's going to be more like, oh, I should be able to control it from out of the house. I should, everything should be a little bit more automated, a little bit more efficient, a little better at power consumption. And let's be honest, the big name of the game, why people love this smart home connected home is for sustainability. And that seems to be why all of these little little tech things are all getting interconnected because it's meant to make a bigger, better life for us, but a bigger, better life for us because we're all interconnected with one another. Hmm. Food for thought. And let me just leave you with one joke here. I was telling my wife a funny story and I'm going to share it with you. There was a turtle and there was a cat and the cat was called Pete the Cat. And Pete the Cat was racing this turtle, and the turtle had a car, and Pete the Cat only had a bike. And they're going through the road, and suddenly the turtle says, you know what, I'm so ahead, I got these rocket boosters, I'm going to go on the side of the road and take a nap. And guess who wins? Guess who finishes the race first? Pete the Cat on his bike, beat the guy on, in, beat the turtle in his car with the rocket boosters. And why do they do that? Because it's a slow and steady push. That's how most technology is working these days, in my opinion. It is incremental improvements so that it could get better integrated into our lives. Instead of just one big, one big improvement where you're like, whoa, well, bam, here, figure out how to use this computer. Here, here's the internet. Figure out how to use this internet. We're seeing smart home connected home becoming more and more useful for a lot of us. And that's why we understand how to use it better. And with faster data, faster technology, it's finally coming home to roost. And this is me, the French Glow, signing off, showcasing and explaining why I think the biggest trend from CES was really something that you can't see. And I'll talk to you later. Bye, bye, bye. Hit that follow button if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll catch you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.